Right. Hey guys, what's up? This is Brad Smith, a senior sports writer for flteams.com, where I typically focus on the Orlando Magic in the University of Florida men's basketball team. And today I would like to talk to you guys about how Mo Bamba's 2021 to 2022 breakout season puts the Orlando Magic in a peculiar contract situation in this upcoming free agency. Now, with this being said, I would like to give you some backstory on what I mean by his breakout season, because over the course of Bamba's first three years with the Magic, well, Bamba was certainly looking like a bust. And this was unfortunate because in the 2018 draft, when he was taken six overall, there were plenty of great players that were taken soon after him by other teams, such as Mikel Bridges to Phoenix at number 10, Shea Gillis Alexander to the Oklahoma City Thunder at number 11, and Miles Bridges to the Charlotte Hornets at number 12, just to name a few. And when you compare the box score and the stats for all four of those players, it is pretty clear that Mo Bamba was a reach with the sixth pick, as he averaged just 6.5 points per game, 5.2 rebounds per game, and 1.3 blocks per game while shooting 47.1% from the field and 32.2% from three-point range in those first three seasons. Now, with this being said, every rookie has four years with their incumbent team before they get to enter restricted free agency. And with this set, with this said, Bamba had one year left with the Magic to prove his worth and that he could be a part of their long-term future. And this being said, he did exactly that this past season as he averaged 10.6 points per game 8.1 rebounds per game, and 1.7 blocks per game while shooting 48% from the field and 38% from downtown, which were all career highs. So as you can see in the aforementioned jump in statistics from his first three years to his final year, Bamba may finally be on the way that the Magic envisioned him as when they took him with a sixth pick. Now at face value, most fans of the Magic and of the NBA in general, they would think that re-signing Bamba would be a no-brainer, right? I mean, he's a great rim-protecting center. He protects the paint very well. He can attack on offense in a multitude of ways. He's not a three-level scorer, but he is a very efficient big man, and he definitely has some range to his game, as you can tell with his shooting percentages. But there is a bit of controversy with re-signing Bamba. First and foremost, Orlando ended up extending the number seven pick from that draft, from the 2018 draft, when up Carter Jr. after acquiring from the Nikola Vucevic trade, they gave him a four-year, $50 million contract ex extension prior to this season, which, by the way, looks like one of the biggest deals all season long as Wendell Carter is the best player on this team at the moment. No doubt in my mind, averaged a double-double at 15 and 10, and just looks like a great player to build around. But let's not get off task. So it's going to be interesting to see if Orlando thinks that Carter Jr. and Bamba can coincide together, because as the stats say, they really can't. After all, Orlando did post a better net rating when Carter Jr. was on the court without Bamba at a negative 0.9 net rating than when Bamba and Carter Jr. were together, which was a negative 5.5 net rating, or when Bamba was just on the court by himself without Carter, which was at a negative 14.8 net rating. So if the Magic do decide to invest heavily in Bamba this summer, then it would likely stop them from adding a game-changing check game-changing big man in the 2022 NBA draft, which they have the number one overall pick. So they have their choice of Duke's Paolo Bencaro, Gonzaga's Chet Holmgren, or Auburn's Jabari Smith. So with this said, what should Orlando do with Bamba's expiring contract this offseason? Well, I have three possible options that I'll give you today. And then I'll tell you which one I think is the best option for Orlando to take best on their current roster construction and salary cap space. So the first option with Mo Bamba is to re-sign him to a short free agency deal or the mid-level exception. So 
this is pretty much a simple explanation for this. If Orlando likes what they saw from Bamba and they believe that he can coexist coexist with Carter Jr., then they definitely should re-sign him. But the next question becomes for how much? Because he is just 23 years old, he has his best basketball ahead of him, and he showed flashes of stardom this season. Ideally, Orlando would be able to sign Bamba to a multi-year contract worth about seven to nine million per year, which is around what the full mid-level exception is. Now, with that being said, Orlando does not have the full mid-level exception. They have the half mid-level exception. They have about half of the mid-level exception, so about five to six million. So they would have to give him more than just one year on a contract if they still want to pay him the value of a mid-level contract. So with this said, a sample contract that I really like to give Bamba would be about a three-year $27 million contract where he gets about $9 million per year. That's basically what he would get with the mid-level exception, just with multiple years, so that Orlando still gets most of his prime while under contract, and he's not very expensive too. Um, because if Orlando does decide to draft Holmgren, Ben Caro, or Jabari Smith, then Bamba will likely resort to the backup center role in Orlando, which is totally fine. I mean, he would be great in that role, but you don't want to pay a backup center about 12 to 15 million, similar to how Minnesota paid Malik Beasley as their six man. Um, or how Miami has been paying Duncan Robinson five, 90 million over five years as their six man who hasn't really done much in the playoffs. So, you know, you really want to be careful with how much you extend Bamba. But I do think that if Orlando does decide that Bamba should be a part of their long term plans, then definitely extend him. But don't break the bank for him because you will have to extend your rookies this season. They'll have three rookies the number one pick, and then the 32nd overall pick and the 35th overall pick. So you'll have to spend money on that. And you'll also have to spend money in free agency too. Um, re-signing restricted free agent Bowl Bowl. Gary Harris is a possibility. Trading Terrence Ross as well. So there's a lot of moving pieces in the offseason for Orlando. So I do think that Orlando should be cautious of how much they re-signed Bomb before. But I definitely think re-signing him is not the worst idea. The second option, though, if Orlando does not want to re-sign Bamba, is they can sign Bamba and then trade him to a team for future assets, also known as a sign-and-trade. So if Orlando does opt to go this route, there will be many other teams interested in Bamba's services. As an NBA team, you can never go wrong with rostering a 7-foot, 231-pound center who can impact the game on both ends of the floor. With this said, some teams interested in Bombo won't be able to absorb his new contract, even if it is around the value of a mid-level exception, because there are just so many teams with negative cap space due to cap holds or dead cap or just any other salary cap issues. There are just very few teams that can take on Bombo's contract. These teams, such as the Golden State Warriors at negative 83.5 million in salary cap, and the Atlanta Hawks, who have negative 80.2 million, you know, it's going to be really hard for those teams to finagle their way to acquire Bamba. So, with this said, the teams that will most likely be able to acquire Bamba are, you know, the Detroit Pistons, who have 26.4 million in salary cap, Indiana, San Antonio, Portland, OKC. New York, Houston, Charlotte, Miami, and Boston, those 10 teams each have a good chance to do so. And teams like Miami and Boston, they both had negative 18 million in salary cap, but they do have trade exceptions that they can use, um, especially Boston. Boston has multiple, and getting rid of guys like Al Horford um, or any other players that are taking up a lot of salary cap on their team they can always do that and clear up more cap, more salary cap space. So with that being said, some possible sign and trade destinations for Bamba to look out if he is in fact signed and traded. 
Milwaukee, the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, outside of Giannis Antetokounmpo, the Bucks severely lack a true true rim protecting center. I mean, Brook Lopez, Bobby Portis, they're both set to enter free agency, and you know, I feel like that was a big reason why Milwaukee just wasn't able to hang with Boston in the playoffs because Robert Williams and Al Horford were just able to dominate. And if they do end up beating the Miami Heat in the finals, which by the time you see this video, you'll already know, um, they'll have to play the Golden State Warriors and Kevon Looney, who at face value, Kevon Looney should not be a threat. But his rebounding skills have been superb this playoffs. So if Boston really struggles to contain Kevon Looney. They could also be a team that can go after Mo Bamba for his ability to rebound the ball, defend the paint, and attack the paint as well. So Boston is another team to look out here. Charlotte as well. You'll definitely see Charlotte in the market for Phoenix's DeAndre Ayton, who's expecting a max contract this offseason. They really don't have that true center. They have Montrezl Harrell but he's just really not that guy. They also have Mason Plumlee, but then again, Mason Plumlee is quite old. Kai Jones, Nick Richards, both young, raw centers. So Charlotte can definitely be in the market for Bamba. And then San Antonio and Portland are two other teams to keep an eye on. Both teams just really don't have that true center yet. I understand that Jakob Hurdle and Yusuf Nurkic are both fan favorites in San Antonio and Portland. But then again, they're just really not the answer, and they're both not getting any younger. So I really feel like Bamba could be a good fit for those teams. And then finally, the third option for Orlando is to just let Bamba walk in free agency for nothing. Now, there will be ma many interested teams if this does happen. And this is probably the least likely option because Bamba can certainly get a first-round pick back in a sign-and-trade or many other young assets that Orlando can acquire for the rebuild. So it's very unlikely, but it is still a possibility. And with this said, there are quite a few teams that could offer Bamba the mid-level, the biannual, or just a multi-year contract that need a very good center in their lineup. And starting with the Brooklyn Nets, I mean, who better? You know, they do have Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, both of which will be future Hall of Famers one day. But they really, really struggled in the playoffs against Boston, trying to defend their big men. And, you know, DeAndre Jordan is just not the guy. He's just not. Um, and, I mean, Kessler Edwards, he's solid. Nick Claxton, very good player. But I don't know if he's that primary option that Brooklyn wants in their starting lineup. And then again, they could also be outpriced for Nick Claxton this year as he's also a restricted free agent. So, you know, we'll see what Brooklyn does. They also have Ben Simmons, who is worth noting, and he should help their poorest defense. But we'll have to see. I mean, adding Bamba would not be a bad option for Brooklyn. Um, another team that you should be on the lookout for, Oklahoma City. I mean, they can just always swoop in and sign these young free agents. They already have Alexei Pokoshetsky um, and plenty of other young, solid players. Just keep stockpiling them if you're OKC and Sam Presti. Um, and then two more teams in the Western Conference, the Memphis Grizzlies and the Dallas Mavericks. And I really want to put emphasis on the Dallas Mavericks here because their only option at center after this free agency, if they don't sign anyone else and they let everyone walk, would be Davis Bertans. And Davis Bertans is a stretch big. He is not capable of playing the center position, which really shows how much depth they lack. Dwight Powell, Maxi Kleber, and Boban Madranovic, that are all entering unrestricted free agency, and they're all 30 years or older. So, I mean, if Bamba's willing to take the nine level, $9 million mid-level exception from Dallas, he would be a great fit alongside Luka Dantich, and possibly Jalen Brunson, uh, Spencer Dinwiddie as well, and he would be a great lockdown threat in the paint. And then going along with Memphis, to keep it short and sweet, you can never have too much depth at the center position. He would pair well with Steven Adams and Jaron Jackson Jr., and would be a great fit in the pick and roll alongside John Grant. 
So with all of those options laid out, what is the best offseason plan for Mo Bamba? Well, in my opinion, I just believe that the Magic aren't ready to contend with the current construction of their roster. And even if they do draft Bancaro, Holmgren, or Smith, Bamba would still be as impactful as Orlando's backup center in case of an injury or in case of a rookie or Carter Jr. struggling. He shouldn't be too expensive either, as he'd likely take that mid-level exception or a multi-year contract that earns about the same as that mid-level would in one year. So I would advise the Orlando Magic to re-sign Mo Bamba to a two to three year deal that gives about seven to nine million to Bamba on a per year basis. So like a two year, $18 million deal, three year, $27 million deal, three year, $30 million deal even. I just don't think letting Bamba walk in free agency for nothing. I just don't think that's really smart for Elena to do. Um, I mean, if they had many options at the center position, then yes, I could see why they would do that. But right now, they just have Wendell Carter Jr. and Robin Lopez right now at the five. And Carter Jr. is better as that four at the power four spot. So, I mean, I think keeping Bamba, even if you draft Holmgren or Jabari Smith or Paulo Bencaro, I feel like keeping... Bamba on a team-friendly contract is the best option to do so. So with that being said, that is my response to what Orlando should do based on Mo Bamba's 2021-2022 breakout season. If you do want more in-depth analysis on this topic, then you can always visit FL Team's website at flteams.com and then go over to the team Select Magic and go ahead and read any of the articles written on the Magic. You'll also find this article up on the website. And with that being said, take care, God bless, and I'll see you guys next time.